Italy is known for many things, and one of them is speed. And speed Italian style conjures up one name, Ferrari. They have the most Formula One wins in history, but the company has hit a speed bump. Consumer sales are unsteady. It's a watershed moment for one of the most iconic brands in the car biz. Their response is extremely risky. Some even wonder if they've gone insane. Ferrari FF is total sacrilege. A four-seat, four-wheel drive supercar with a hatchback. This is a Ferrari For many auto enthusiasts, Maranello Italy means only one thing. Ferrari. You have to go on the track and you have to win. Ferrari is very good at winning. The only company that's raced every season of Formula One since the series began in 1950. Just the name conjures up automotive romance. For years, the company has been famous for building Formula One race cars. And its consumer counterpart, sexy two-seat supercars. We can offer the sporty feeling that you have to feel when you drive the car. But Ferrari must adapt. We have to understand what is the evolution of the customer. With the high-end sports car marketplace growing more and more crowded, the company needs a new machine. This is a, a completely new kind of model because we are thinking of completely new customer. Something bold. Something striking. Something different. Big uh, innovation in terms of uh, how we conceive the product. The answer comes at the 2011 Geneva Auto Show. Today, it's even more important than a surprise because uh, this car, FF, represents for us really a very important and fantastic challenge. One, two, three, go. The Ferrari FF. A supercar that's unlike any other on the road today. But a machine that threatens to be highly polarizing. I mean, we all think Ferrari's a bunch of guys that are like, ah, let's do this, it's crazy. The design of the machine is a significant departure and a huge gamble for the company. The purists are going to say, well, it's got to look like a sports car, but mm -mm, mm -mm. Some people question if the company's gone nuts. It's ridiculously fast, ridiculously capable, actually not all that insane at all. But Ferrari feels it has to shake up the marketplace. This is a new segment. This is the uh, answer to the question that the world is changing. And to do it, they need to respond to that change. In recent years, sales have been uneven. 
Although people who can afford a Ferrari were less affected by the economic crash, it certainly made sales unpredictable. They're business guys, and at some point, somebody probably looked at a business case and realized that Ferrari owners also have things with a hatch, some sort of SUV, some sort of other car with a reasonable backseat, and they thought, well, why give up this business to somebody else? Historically, the brand has never been about practicality. But now, in order to stay at the front of the pack, they have to be. As time changes, we wanted to have a car which was fitting even better to the request of our clients. The key request is I would like to use my Ferrari as much as possible. It's a vicious cycle. The brand is famous for winning Formula One races and then transferring that technology to the street. But that costs money. And there's a limit to how many two-seat supercars that can't hold groceries you can sell. The FF is Ferrari's attempt at saying, OK, if you want to drive your Ferrari all year round and you need a trunk and you need a back seat, here you go. In the car world, the FF is also a classically Italian machine. It's a car that causes an immediate emotional reaction the moment you see it. You either love them or you hate them. Ferrari FF is a shooting brake, which is a really bizarre term for a two-door station wagon. The term shooting brake originally referred to a car that carried hunting parties around private estates. It's both fancy and antiquated vocabulary. And this term gets around any potential stigma attached to station wagons. The car is conceived to be a car for four people. Being a car for four people means that you need to have some space inside, and this is also for shaping the car outside. Shape and style are everything at Ferrari. For both the cars and the factory. Behind the old brick walls is a modern complex where architecture matters as much as the cars. The Ferrari factory is like this huge complex of the most insanely gorgeous machinery filled with a lot of cappuccino. The factory is spread out over a 250,000 square meter campus. There's a foundry a milling facility, a paint shop, a final assembly line, and even a wind tunnel. It's a place that treasures history and cutting edge futurism. It is not what you'd expect from Italy because it's kind of corporate and it's kind of clean and everybody is doing exactly what they should. But when you start noticing the way the robots move and what exactly they're building, then it becomes special. Special because a company philosophy links the quality of its cars with the quality of its workplace. In this building, we place great importance on what we call Formula Uomo, which puts people before everything. We put great emphasis on light in particular. There are some very large windows. We did the same with greenery to make the environment more pleasant. Few would question the beauty of the Ferrari factory. But some purists question the looks of the new FF that's built here. Going as far as saying the brand sold out its soul. 
but it's hard to argue with the performance. Balancing speed and style has always been a universal supercar conundrum. There has been a lot of uh, starting from a design point of view, the best compromise uh, in order to have a car which is still sporty, because this is a Ferrari, but at the same time is not uh, aggressive. Some situation needs also to be elegant. The look of the car is the most striking and obvious change, but it's not the most revolutionary. It's revolutionary, because I've worked for Ferrari since 1971, and there was never any notion we could have a four-wheel drive. Four-wheel drive is something no one at Ferrari had ever imagined. Four-wheel drive is meant to allow to use the car maybe when it's raining, maybe on the snow. So all those kind of situations where you would normally not imagine to, to use the Ferrari. It's also something that the company has never done before. Our first four-wheel drive by this car is a Ferrari. This means that uh, you have to enjoy yourself when driving the car. Ferrari's lack of experience with four-wheel drive could have been a major weakness. Instead, they make it a strength. They break with convention and take another risk. This is a new solution, uh, an original solution for a four-wheel drive. The FF represents a major breakthrough because of its truly unique four-wheel drive system. There's nothing like it on any other car in the world. The company takes a Formula One racing approach. Lighter is faster. And applies it to their four-wheel drive system. What's the problem for a normal four-wheel drive? The most important problem is the weight. Weight is the enemy for all supercars. But it's even more of a challenge for a four-wheel drive supercar. Four-wheel drive is single-handedly the worst thing you could do for weight in a car. You're adding gear shifts and drive shafts and stuff all over the place. In a conventional four-wheel drive machine, the engine sends power to a transfer case. The transfer case distributes energy in two directions, using two different drive shafts. Ferrari's solution is to ignore the transfer case completely, and instead uses two different transmissions, but only one drive shaft. The technology might be complicated, but the result is not. The FF is fast, very fast, with a top speed of 335 kilometers an hour. One other modern revolution allows Ferrari to so radically reimagine four-wheel drive. The computer. The surprise is it's got a seven-speed automatic in the back and a two-speed automatic in the front, and the computer just kind of slips clutches and figures out how to make it all work. And as a driver, you don't know what's happening. It just works. The computers were developed by the company's Formula One team. Like uh, always in Ferrari, we're doing innovation, being this uh, technical innovation is uh, in our DNA. We also have always have strong link with, uh, with our past. There is a direct and immediate connection between Formula One and the FF. We have uh, three important fields that we are working with the Formula One, engine, aerodynamics and electronics. While it takes nearly three years to develop the car, it takes almost six years to get the electronics right. We developed 
together with the Formula One guy a lot of uh, algorithms that, that are our algorithms. The result is a variety of new electronic systems. Using formulas developed by the race team. All those systems operate as one. Integrated into a single computer system. What we have now is uh, an integration of each subsystem controls that let us to optimize uh, the whole car. The car's computer also manages its engine. I would like to start with the engine uh, because for sure is the most important component of the car. So this is the completely new V12 with uh, 660 horsepower. If high performance is the brand's most identifiable trait, then making money comes in a close second. The brand is owned by Fiat and has the highest profit margin of any mark owned by the automotive conglomerate. Profit margins so lofty that the company with the prancing horse logo is valued somewhere around 3 billion euros. Analysts peg the entire Fiat Group's net worth at around 8 billion euros. If it's successful, the new FF could increase Ferrari profits even more. It's the gentleman of this sort of supercar world. And you get in and it's pretty nice inside and it's well appointed and then it rides like a dream. And the joke is, here's a car that can keep up with a Ferrari 458 Italia on the racetrack and you're driving on the street, you might as well be in some Lexus. For the last several years, Ferrari has produced somewhere between 6,100 and 7,100 cars a year. The FF could potentially raise that number by 15%. We have uh, in uh, Maranello here uh, all the uh, possible uh, areas where we build actually Ferrari. So we start from uh, uh, engines and uh, this is where we build, uh, just across the road, we build them. That engine comes to life not with wrenches, but with molten metal. If your image of a foundry is a dark, dirty place with flames flashing all over, Ferrari's a surprise. This foundry is a clean, well-lit building. that looks more scientific than industrial. The FF engine is made from lightweight aluminium. We melt the aluminum, the ingots, and uh, we reach more or less 800 degrees inside the furnace. They fill a huge cauldron taking samples of the melted aluminium to ensure its exact chemical composition. Then pouring the molten metal into a second furnace to heat it some more. To have a complete filling of uh, this furnace, we use uh, eight, nine, uh, hundred kilo of aluminum. It takes about 75 kilograms of molten aluminium to make one engine. So we melt more or less 900 kilos of aluminium, which means 12 complete engines of attack. It's time to pour the molten aluminium into molds that form the basic shape of the engine parts. The aluminium is getting cooler, but temperature is still key. The temperature is very critical. We use more or less inside the mold at 300 degrees. It's critical because uh, the temperature of the mold uh, have a, a very important impact uh, on the mechanical characteristics of the engine.
They use two kinds of moulds to build the engine. Some are made of steel and can be used over and over. The steel allows very accurate control of temperatures. It's very important to decrease very quickly the temperature of the aluminum after casting to have a good mechanical characteristics. The second type of mold is made from sand. Inside the foundry we have also the department where we produce the sand cores. This is a real importance because they produce all the cavity inside the engines. Without the cores, the steel mold would produce one giant block of aluminium. So what we can see here is all the cavity inside the cylinder heads. Then this block is placed inside the permanent mold, the mold closed, and we put the aluminium inside the steel. Even the kind of sand they use needs to be special. The most important thing in this phase is the quality of the sand, because uh, in this sand uh, there are some resins, uh, and the resins uh, can give us uh, some uh, defects inside uh, the mold. For example, we can have uh, bubbles or gas or other defects like this. This is no easy day at the beach. They flip the mold over. Again, the FF benefits from what's been learned by the Formula One race team. This is the same process uh, for the Formula One. In fact, that there we have a little uh, department where we cast only Formula One components. There's a control area where they measure every finished mold. The operator is uh, looking for uh, all the cavity, so he's uh, controlling that uh, the cavity are uh, without defect. Tolerances are remarkable. The maximum variation allowed is half a millimetre. And what they can't check visually, they check with an X-ray machine. It's the first of several quality control steps that FF parts will go through. Because in launching a radical departure for the brand, they don't leave anything to chance. There's an entire building devoted to milling the rough metal pieces from the foundry into pristine engine parts. This is the building in which we do the mechanical machining of the cylinder heads, the engine block and the crankshafts. The crankshaft, which spins the engine pistons, is the backbone of the V12 and it's one of the hardest pieces to manufacture. It takes 35 days to create just one crankshaft. After receiving a raw piece from the foundry, they machine material away. Heat treated. Grind more metal away by hand. Before doing the final finishing. Like the old days, Men grind and polish engine parts by hand. But robots get in on the action too. 
Moto romantic. It's robo romantic. It's robots. I mean, there's a lot of robots and people there too, but it's just they're building art with robots. In it. Robotic art with a literary twist. Questa è una delle due isole robotizzate dove montiamo this is one of two robot islands where we put the valve set inserts into the cylinder heads. On this island in particular, we've nicknamed the robots Romeo and Juliet because one passes the valve set and insert to the other before it's put into the head. Shakespeare never imagined how cold love could get. Romeo and Juliet, cool valve seats to minus 126 degrees Celsius in liquid nitrogen. When the engine heads come back to room temperature, the valves will be clasped tightly in place. It seems the heart of an ultra high performance engine pays a hefty price. Ferrari is now ready to build the FF's world-famous V12 engine. We are in the engine assembly area. Having been in the foundry and in the mechanical machining area, we are now at the point where the machined cast and forged components are assembled into an engine. This is the 12-cylinder line. One man will build a new power plant from start to finish. It will take him five days to do it. Five days to create a 660 horsepower masterpiece directly derived from Formula One racing. We are working with the Formula One for the engine and materials, also the methodology to grow up with the performances and to develop each component of the engine. They start by mounting the engine block on a special card. Pistons are checked. The crankshaft is carried to the engine. Parts carefully oiled. Very slowly, each of the engine's 12 pistons slide in. Gaskets and cylinder heads are installed. The crankcase is fitted and very carefully bolted down. And finally, the exhaust manifolds. Another V12 engine is ready to be shipped to the final assembly area. A radically shaped Ferrari FF is about to be born. But first, it needs a new body. A new body made out of 23 different metals. In a world where many exotic cars use carbon fiber and other composite materials to cut weight, Ferrari uses aluminium. An inheritance from its early Formula One cars, which were all built with aluminium bodies. The FF uh, is uh, an evolution of our aluminium alloys. Uh, so in order to save every time uh, as much as possible the weight of the car, we are specializing every part of the car with the right alloy. The FF's body is crafted at Ferrari's Scaglietti facility, which is located 18 kilometers away from Maranello. 
It's the only part of the production process that's not done within the factory complex walls. But it might be its most artistic. Working with aluminium is an art, and making a body shell is like making a sculpture. A sculpture that comes to life, piece by piece, as artisans weld them together. We produce all the bodies from the first prototypes to the production ones here in Scaglietti. Sixty percent of the body is put together by individual craftsmen. Aluminium is much more difficult to work with than steel, but Ferrari chose it because it's also much lighter and more rigid. This need to combine lightness with rigidity leads Ferrari engineers to choose 23 different materials. 23 is the big number, but probably in the future we will increase this kind of number. Each part of the car must be designed in order to save the weight as much as possible. First, they place the aluminium space frame on the line. Add major pieces, like the rear fenders. The roof. Halfway through the process, there's another quality control check. Here, a five-axis measuring device checks tolerances and fit. They hang the doors. Add the signature shooting brake rear hatch. Put on the front fenders. And finally, the hood. Artisans ensure the fit and finish is perfect. Before yet another quality control step. This time under special lights that help workers see any imperfections in the sheet metal. Now the finished FF body heads to Maranello. Until now, all the bodies are the same. But that's about to change. Inside a room very few people ever get to see. If you're one of the lucky few who can afford such a luxurious supercar, Odds are, you picked out your upholstery and other options here. Nowadays, 99% uh, of the Ferraris have at least one personalization by their owners. People who want to customize the options on their new machine. Where we are here is a tailor-made atelier. It's a very special and dedicated one. Only tailor-made clients uh, are uh, coming here. Clients who want their FF 
to be different from the plain old ordinary 233,000 euro FFs. So, for example, we use on the FF uh, in this atelier, we put cashmere on the, on the roof so that when you touch the roof, which is normally something that is uh, done in a very uh, basic uh, material, you have a very rich and different uh, sensation. Cashmere is just one of a number of possible upgrades on the FF. So for the trunk of this FF, we want to do something really different. This is a very nice uh, touch because it's aging with time, so the color is changing as it, as it does. We tend to experiment. The only point, uh, and we need to be very mindful here, is that these uh, uh, materials are going to a car. Mindful, because there's only so far Ferrari will let the customization go. A client who comes here to have a tailor-made car is always assisted by a personal designer who knows the guidelines that we have to respect the brand. So a pink Ferrari will not be born in this, in this uh, room, for sure. So they won't go pink. But one of the more popular colors is the same red they paint all their Formula One race cars. That classic Ferrari red and all the other colors they offer are applied in the paint shop in Marinello. Here we are in the first main part of the process. Wash and clean the car body. They put the car into chemicals to keep it from rusting. The challenge of the painting is to guarantee there is no corrosion. The next step after the electro coat is the sealing application. Ultimately, a Ferrari will have four layers of coating or paint before it's finished. A layer of electro coating, a layer of primer, a layer of top coat, a layer of clear coat. It's a process that can't be rushed. To paint uh, completely an FF, we need 2.5 days. It's a lot of work for a very thin layer of paint. The thickness of the paint is 200 microns. The final inspection is more important for us because it's a manual activity, visual activity. And the people are skilled to discover all the imperfection on the painting, only looking at the reflection of the light on the surface. Here we are. At the end of the process, after the quality control of the car body, we remove some imperfection and then we can deliver the car to the assembly line. A newly painted FF is about to head off to the final assembly line. A final assembly line that's one of the keys to Ferrari's future. It's built for ice and snow. It's been through heat and flames. It's wickedly fast. And a total reinvention of a brand. But the FF can't actually be called a Ferrari until it hits station number one on the final assembly line. That's where the hands of just one man add a logo that means more than simply speed. It's a logo whose meaning and Formula One heritage Ferrari has decided to risk with the introduction of the FF. A machine that looks different than any other current Ferrari, but is built in a very similar fashion.
La qualità in generale della vettura è il punto focale. The overall quality of the car is always the focal point of our work. That's our obsession when we're assembling our cars, regardless of whether it's the running gear or the bodywork. The build starts with a laser cutting machine. Questa è la macchina di taglio, funziona a laser. This is the laser cutting machine. It helps us select the best parts of the leather because only the finest leather can be used in our cabins. Leather pieces that are then sent to two sub-assembly areas, right next to the final line. They install the monster Formula One based CPU chip that connects all the subsystems together. Now, it's time for the dashboards. This is the line where we put together drivetrain subassembly. We assemble the engine and the transmission, and then the whole subassembly is taken to the car. This is the heart of the car. A 660 horsepower Formula One inspired heart that beats fast on the racetrack. With a heart and a batch, the FF is almost a race-ready Ferrari, but not quite yet. It still needs a few more pieces before it can be called a true Ferrari. They install another piece of race-proven technology, carbon ceramic brakes. Then the radiator. Headlights and tires. Installing the steering wheel is special because here is where they program the Formula One designed CPU chip for each FF's unique destination. It's like turning on your home computer for the first time. It asks you what country you're in, what time zone, what language you want. Now every new FF knows whether it should display kilometers or miles per hour, liters or gallons. Finally, it's time to put the finished doors on. Install the seats. and do the final quality check. A new Ferrari FF has been born. But whether some think it should have been is still a question open to debate. For sure, this is a step that from the innovation point of view is a very big step. But from the characteristic of the shape and so on, is not the same that we, we had in the past. The first all-season, every condition, four-wheel drive Ferrari. I've driven it in the snow, I've driven it up in the mountains. Chances are people, are, when they go skiing, are still going to take their SUVs. But you can drive the FF to your garage where you store your SUV. Now it's up to the marketplace to decide whether Ferrari has done the unthinkable or simply the next logical step in a Formula One racing heritage that goes back over 50 years. Different Ferrari for different Ferraristi, different Ferrari customers. This is the new philosophy of Ferrari.